Salam sejahtera. Good evening, Malaysia. My name is Elaine Audrey, your show host. On behalf of the Unity Channel, I would like to extend our heartfelt condolences to the families of Yang Berhormat Datin Manismuka Muhammad Dara and Yang Berhormat Datu Hasbula Osman. May their souls rest in peace and may Allah grant their families strength during this difficult time. Indeed, it is a difficult time for everyone. It has not been an easy year, one of the most devastating periods in human history. But through unity, we can get through this together. Let us help each other out and take care of one another. A huge shout out to our frontliners and servicemen who are risking their lives out there, even as I speak right now. The least we could do to honor their service and sacrifice is by reminding ourselves, our family, our friends, and the people we know to wear masks at all times when you're out in public and sanitize all the time. All right, to our agenda for tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I am hosting the very first episode of The Unity Show, live from the land below the wind. Our show is a spin-off from the recent unity movement that strives to unite the nation through the interests of our generation, be it arts, music, and entertainment. Our mission is to unite every Malaysia, Malaysian, regardless of your political ideology, race, or religion, to come as one and to spread hope, not hate, unity, not division. Unity is what makes Malaysia strong. So let's keep the faith and let's spread the faith. On this historic night, I have the pleasure of inviting two very esteemed gentlemen who will not require further introduction. I think you guys know who those two are. Please let me welcome Datu Sri Shafi Abdal and YB Said Sadiq. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Thank you very much, Hi, Datu Sri, how are you? Well, um, did quite okay. <laughs> You're doing great, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm for attending parliament and tomorrow is a big day indeed. With yeah. Tomorrow day. is a big day, yeah. Yeah. The fact, the fact that, to, uh, the fact that, that Datuk Sri is wearing his uh, gamer uh, uh, headset means that he's geared up, you know. Really, really. Really, ge- <laughs> really ready. Really ready for tomorrow. Really ready yeah. for tomorrow. Yeah, uh, Sadik, <laughs> uh, Sadik, uh, would you w- would you prefer me to address you as YB or Sadik? No, Sadik, Sadik will do. Sadik, yeah. Sadik will do. Yeah. So uh, we know you've uh, been pretty occupied on the other side from your social yeah. media. I hope you've been taking care of yourself. Are you well? Yeah, yeah, I am. I am looking yeah. forward for the budget tomorrow. Vote tomorrow. I think the all Malaysians, for- all Malaysians, regardless of state, ethnicity, religion, uh, anticipating. Uh, something interesting to come yeah Yeah. all right well i hope everything goes well tomorrow anyway uh so i guess i'll just dive into tonight's show the unity show that the three starting off with the show's name there's so much talk about the division that is going on in the country they call it the the bandar kampung divide Uh, do you think a unity a unity movement like ours can actually work to unite everyone from all walks of life. Well, I think it's indeed very crucial for us to realize that we are on a difficult path where oh. there seems to be going towards where people are very divided, not only in terms of race and religion, and also gender and so many things uh, in life. It's very concerning. So it is indeed very crucial and very important for us to ensure that how best we can realize uniting all Malaysians. We have seen in the history of human beings, humankind, when people are united and they can pull the pause and they can get away from all sort of obstacles in their life, whether it's through poverty. I mean, one good example when you have seen, for example, the Second World War, when Hiroshima was bombarded by America and uh, the unity among the Japanese was there and they managed to excel far much better than many developed countries and they become a very powerful force. And I think it is indeed very important for us, not only in this part of the world, Malaysia, 
but also setting an example in the region as well as the world, where I think it is uh, crucial for us not only to ensure that we can realize it, but also to ensure that it will be uh, transmitted to the younger generations as part and parcel of their practices in life. How important uh, uniting the people uh, in our life is very, very important indeed, because that will distract not only not only to ensure that we can have a better education. I mean, uh, you can imagine, I mean, down the line, they, even we are divided mm -hmm. in the school, school level, and then mm -hmm. certain places in, uh, in our country, which is indeed very concerning to us. I think it is uh, crucial for us to not only highlighting it, knowing it, but I think it is very important, timely for us to find ways and means. What are the prescriptions? What are the solutions? It's not good enough for us to know. Uh, they are divisive, they are, we are divided in terms of race and religion, not only in terms of the, uh, our livelihood, some of our people, for example, like how many of the Indians in the country at the level of poverty and how many are honestly, how many of some of the indigenous groups in Sabah needing help from us. I think this is indeed a disparity, not only in terms of income, culture, whatever it is. I think we have mm -hmm. to really go down uh, looking into it and how best, not only for us to know it, but also let out. Uh, action plan, whatever, prescribe that to ensure that the way forward and end of the day, uh, what we are facing now will not be felt by our young generations to come. So I think this is what our role is as a leader of the country, provide the solutions and enhance the base that you have in the country so that people do understand why unity is indeed very crucial for everyone, you know, mm. to ensure that they have a better livelihood, a better understanding in life. I mean, you have seen, in spite of whatever they have been given by God, wealth that they have, but division and division. Just look at, I mean, one good example, the recent one is U.S. <laughs> election. Mm. Goodness, mm. You imagine, you know, when Donald Trump took over the power and then uh, all of a sudden you can imagine, you know, Black lives matters. That's what yeah. it's now from that mm. part of the world. I mean, they're supposed to be advanced society, advanced country, and yet they're still struggling with that sort of uh, problem that they had. So I think we have to learn lessons from those yep. environments surrounding the world and how, we, how best we can put our country and Malaysians at large, that we can work not only for the betterment of our generations, the country. Yeah. That, that's right, that's right. But um, uh, Dr. Sri, uh, I'm not looking at the comment section right now, but I for sure already can predict there are a number of people saying, "Kenapa host chuck up English?" Oh. So this, so these li little things <laughs> like this, that this re, it's difficult to accept a person here in Malaysia. So what more, what more of a unity movement? How how can we break this? Uh, how what can we do to unite? Hmm and not have little things like this um, divide us as a nation? Well, language indeed is very crucial for us. And that's why school was uh, devised in such a manner. When we gained our independence, there was a national school. But at the same time, we cannot deprive people for having their own kind of uh, ethnic city. So it is indeed very crucial for us to not only realizing it, respecting it, because out of that, when you respect other people's culture, what I mean by culture is also languages, and that will be in a way that uh, you can also gain uniting the people. But of course, it's very important for us to have a common kind of ways of expressing ourselves. I think it is not because we have been colonized by the British, that's why we tend to speak English. It's time for us to look forward. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, it doesn't mean that when you use the news, the language of, uh, say, like English, and then you will deprive your own uh, language. No, it's not that. I think uh, one must, must, must realize that we must have that sort of confidence in ourselves. And it doesn't mean that, you know, when you speak English, but well, you don't speak English in the villages where the people doesn't understand you. What is important for you to communicate and to, for you to express your views, particularly those younger generations to come. Yeah. Because these younger generations are the bigger group of them coming up now and they will be the future leader. And how can we interact with these people when 
the language is also a barrier for us to communicate yeah. with them. So it's high time for us to do that. That sort of things that we can uh, inculcate in our roadmap on how best we can unite. Uh, and also not only unite, like uniting with people, but for example, like an international forum, how can we express ourselves in the international arena platform mm-hmm. when there will be questions posed to us about how did you achieve unity in Malaysia? You know, that sort of things. You know, diversity yeah. in Malaysia. And mm. in spite of all things that we have, uh, you know, in Sabah alone, the land below with the wind, we have about more than 50 plus, I think, races in, the, in Sabah. Mm. And yet we can talk, we can mingle around, we can uh, sit down having a cup of coffee without sort of like, Oh, is that is that glass hala? Is that uh, mm. you know, um, sort of things? You know, I mean, forget mm. about it. I think what is important for us, I think, uh, the need for us to interact and interactions, mm. and that is indeed uh, getting uh, our position better to know each other, and then that's how you can unite. You know, yeah. more people. Totally yeah. agree with you, Dr. Sri. What about you, Sadik? Do you have any comments on this? Yeah, I mean, just to add. Um, if there are those who say that just because um, we speak in English that suddenly reduces our sense of patriotism, nationalism, I think they're wrong. Uh, the reality is uh, our ability to, to be bilingual, trilingual, in no way makes us less of a Malay uh, or uh, people of this beloved land. Um, because even if you look at the history of Malaysia, uh, we are of an we are we are very entrepreneurial in nature, you know. Especially if you look at the Malacca Sultanate, um, we, yeah. we have yeah we we were the so-called explorers uh, of the region in Southeast Asia, and for that we were bilingual, trilingual, and that in no way reduces our national identity. Um, so I believe, and I firmly believe, that in order for Malaysia to move forward, unity comes through language, through identity. Um, and in order for us to remain competitive, uh, it is critical, especially for young Malaysians, to be more bi- bi- bilingual and trilingual. I mean, you, you see many, many reports uh, uh, published by Kazana Research Institute or by other uh, think tanks showing that the ability to speak bilingually or trilingually uh, assists a person to become a lot more competitive in the job market. So uh, if there are still those who choose to deride, condemn, criticize fellow Malaysians who dare to speak a different language, to learn a different language, and then I think it's critical for us to correct that misperception. Kerana reality ni sebagai salah seorang rakyat Malaysia, kita perlu fasih berbahasa dalam bahasa Melayu, dalam um, bahasa Inggeris, dalam uh, bahasa-bahasa lain. Dan apabila kita berani untuk uh, untuk bertutur dalam bahasa lain dengan baik dan fasih yang menunjukkan bahawa kita merupakan uh, rakyat Malaysia yang patriotik kerana kita berani untuk belajar bahasa-bahasa lain uh, kerana interaksi itulah setiap yang Datuk Sri Syafiq tekankan the interactions which we have uh, is uh, very important to ensure that we build stronger bonds, stronger bridges with one another and to show that true sense uh, of that Malaysian identity that there is unity in diversity and that mm. our diversity should be treated as a huge asset and should never be treated as a liability. You guys heard that, uh, the audience. I hope you guys learned something from, from that one question. I certainly learned a lot and I feel really supported and, and really, really, really good after hearing that. Dr. Sri, you used to be with the Ministry of Information for a few years. You have engaged with... Um, Malaysian singers, actors, and you're also well, well versed in a lot of cultures. The question here, the most common question here in Sabah, that is really why isn't there any platform for us uh, young talents here in Sabah? We've got so much talk on how, how the West Malaysians are earning much better, let's say in the music industry compared to musicians living in, in Sabah. For example, um, for a normal weekly gig in, in KK, a respectable musician earns an average 150 ringgit per show per person. In KL's music scene, a respectable musician earns a minimum of four to 500 per show per person. So a lot of Sabahan musicians have moved to KL hoping to earn a better living. And 
what's your take on this? Will Sabahad ever get to earn that desired decent amount of pay like our neighbors in the peninsula? It can be realized, actually. Uh, I, I do I do notice this. When I was then the chief minister of Sabah, I, uh, I didn't get to show that. It was on the road map, actually. I engaged with some of the young talents. It's talent about those guys uh, in that sort of, sort of like uh, a spectrum of life. Entertainers, I remember there, there were many of them, John Geisha, during my era, good singer. Mm-hmm. With the, they always talked to me when I was then serving uh, KL. You know, somehow they have a very good vocals, you know. Not only yeah. the look, not only the look they have, but also the voice. They're good, good vocal. Unfortunately, as you have indicated just now, tapping it, how best we can, not only you hear them, but how best we can commercialize them. So yeah. I think unfortunately, unfortunately, that's why we, we didn't have the platform under the state government. Then, you know, where I think how you can enhance that sort of people talent so they can have a better living. Even in Kerala, when I was then, uh, so I served Ministry of Information. By the way, I, I was also Minister of Unity, you know, in the country. Mm. Uh, two yes. Years. yes. And then uh, when I was in information, I remember when I first heard Siti Norraliza sing at the RTM, and I was seated by the side of my colleague, uh, Tun Tan Sri Muhammad Rahman. So he told me, I said, this is a young girl. Uh, city, she was, I think, from five, if I'm not mistaken. You know, Boys is oh, he got talent. And what did we do? What, what did we do to ensure that we can sort of like uh, uh, making her famous not only because she got a good ball girls and a girl coming from a small village of Pahang? And then uh, we utilize all the instruments that we have platform like radio. TV, RTM, then, you know, and then uh, expose it to, to that sort of things where I think it is indeed very crucial for us how best we can do that for the Sabah. That's why I talk to even Astro and I also uh, have that roadmap to ensure that we have our own channel of TV in Sabah. Mm. That was on my pipeline to ensure that the audience, you know, can hear them and we, they can, we can allow them to perform. So at least to ensure that they can be heard and we can commercialize that too. And uh, through competition as well, you know, can be held. But you can uh, create talent, not only in terms of uh, organizing competitions, but at the school levels as well. You know, you can tap them uh, how best they are and uh, you know where they're talent. Some, some people thought that, you know, being a singer is not a form of living that you can earn. But I tell you, I mean, what, what you have said Lynn, just now, for example, like in many developed countries, how have they been able, for example, like all oh, those singers, all those actors and actresses, earning millions of money, you, you name it, uh, Julia Robert is one of my favorite as well, Richard Gere. <laughs> oh. So those people, you can imagine, they can earn by just one slot of a movie, by million, 10 million US, 20 yeah. million US. But how best we can commercialize that? That was also when I was in, in information, we did discuss this. How can we ensure that our talent uh, can be realized? But I think the role that can be played, not only by the government, but also by the private sectors. And I think it's indeed very crucial for us to uh, set it up. But unfortunately, uh, you know, it's not too late. Uh, I should make a comeback. In some I think uh, you know, we can uh, ensure that the platform will be there. So not only we can have that talent to be shown not only in the country, but also internationally. But I think I have seen yeah. I have young Sabahan Malaysians, they do have good talents, you know. Oh, yeah, we, you know. we have plenty of them, not just musicians, actors. Yeah, we have plenty room. of them. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, what about Sadiq? Do you, do you think it's fair that the Peninsula side is earning much, much better compared to us here? Hmm. I believe this problem is uh, systemic of a larger problem. It's not just uh, exclusive to the art scene or entertainment. Yeah. Uh, as yeah. you rightfully pointed out, uh, if you look uh, the comparison of those who earn in KL or in KK, there's a big difference. Not just KL and KK, you can also look at other major cities like JB uh, and KK. Yeah. I think it's, it's just a lack of opportunities, uh, targeted investments, um, so the point in which you have more greater economic activities, greater investments locally, internationally, 
federal government pumping in more development projects uh, in in Borneo states in the end which will then trickle down creates more mm. jobs opportunities small businesses coming up and in the end creating more quality jobs and therefore the greater need uh, for uh, robust arts and entertainment industry you know when people have more high paid high paying jobs that's when they can start you know to go to listen to music enjoy culture arts a lot more and in the end the income of those artists will also subsequently uh, increase but the most important formula to it is to ensure that there is greater respect when we talk about unity it's not just among race and religion but it's also about acknowledging the special position of sabah and sarawak in the greater malaysia federation um, so once we acknowledge that that's when you get greater equity in the distribution of wealth in malaysia you get greater development projects in sabah you get greater economic injection in sabah uh, job creation so that in the end we no longer need to see uh, not just capital flight from sabah and sarawak to semenanjung but also that intellectual capital flight you know having young uh, sabahans who are genuinely good and talented but uh, only being able to get the opportunities when they fly down to uh, kl for a good paying job or for even even to uh, even to the smallest of internship opportunities um, so yes. i believe the point in which we treat uh, uh, Sabah and Sarawak as uh, equal partners and uh, we pivot economic growth there as well, I think Malaysia overall will benefit. Will benefit in terms of greater economic prosperity, but also in terms of embracing uh, the unity culture which uh, Sabah reflects really well, which should be a benchmark for all Malaysians that were able to put our, our race and religion aside and were able to come together uh, as one national identity. And I hope that uh, that's something which we can learn uh, together. Yeah, that's very empowering. Um, Sadiq, you um, are back in school? Are you still back in school? Are you on pause? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a part-time you too. Uh, part -time student as well. <laughs> uh, obviously, I can't be part -time. In, in Singapore now, in Singapore for, for right, my right. executive course. So I do online classes. But next year in February and March, I need to physically be in Singapore to complete my course. So hopefully, All right. hopefully the, the Malaysian political boat will not be shaken too much to the point that... Uh, <laughs> that uh, you're not to able to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sadiq, I, I, was, uh, I was stalking your Twitter. I think a lot of people, a lot of people stalk you. But um, I came across to your, your, um, your post as of today. You were with Datu Sri Najib? What was that yes, about? Yes, yes. Uh, it's a long, long... Uh, uh, <laughs> That's where he's <discussion>. laughing. <laughs> yeah, but in general, I mean, I remember when, when I was uh, a part of government serving yeah. as a Minister of Youth and Sports, uh, I was given the task to, to, to have a bipartisan, a bipartisan win, which is to get three critical constitutional amendments through. Uh, one of the biggest ones, which is Undi 18, uh, which will reduce the voting age from 21, to 18 years old, which will subsequently tilt the power balance uh, in favour of young people, an inclusion of 7.8 million young voters, which means that there will be about 60 to 70% of the electorate made up of young people. So therefore, the kingmakers will be the youth. And, but for that to be a reality, I had to engage, discuss, negotiate with mm. uh, politicians from all sides because government didn't have to third support then. So I even met up with Datuk Sri Najib, Datuk Sri Zahid, Tok Guru Hadiawang. I remember flying to Sabah to see Datuk Sri Shafi, flying to Sarawak to see Abang Jo, to get that greater bipartisan consensus to move forward. If I could do it then, when I was in a position of power, I think in opposition now, discussing about the budget, especially to get some agendas through, you know, to get the extension of the moratorium, which stands at the interest of all Malaysians, especially small businesses, regardless of race and religion to also get more allocations for the youth, especially for university students to see uh, greater allocations uh, to them and to remove allocations, unnecessary allocations like for JASA, propaganda unit, where 85 million is being allocated there. Um, so I think when it comes to a bipartisan win, uh, I think it's important for MPs uh, to come together to demand for, for greater things uh, which should be al uh, allocated in the budget. So... I am a firm believer in bipartisanship, despite the fact that we have uh, uh, a strong differing views when it comes to our politics. However, when it comes to national interests, issues of policies, where we can come together, I think all MPs can come together. I've met up 
not just with Datuk Sri Najib. Yesterday, I met up with uh, with leaders from all sides. I've also met up with the political secretary of the prime minister. Before this, with the minister of finance, met up with uh, leaders of respective parties. I think from Warisan, I had the privilege of meeting up with Dara Liking, the deputy president of Warisan, to discuss about these agendas. So, yeah, uh, meeting up with as many leaders as I could to forge uh, a way forward for Malaysia. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's a three. I have a question for you, for you here from one of uh, the audience. Many platforms, obviously, are pointing fingers at certain leaders for the rise of COVID-19 cases. I, I think you already know where I'm going <laughs> from here. <laughs> so... Some of the blame is on you because, you know, people just want to blame somebody because of it. That is right. Saying it was your decision on the dis dissolution of the State Legislative Assembly that caused this whole rise. What do you have to say to these people? Can, can you tell our nationwide, our audience tonight, what was the reason you did what you did? Some very familiar questions in Parliament. <laughs> oh, really? But how, you know, and blaming people about what actually uh, uh, happened before. I think before I answer that, I really appreciate what the CDA has said, indicated just now, the need for the younger people to engage with as many as possible. You know, that's how you can realize better understanding and uniting a relation because you know each other better. Sometimes you have this sort of culture why should you meet this guy? Why should you go there? That sort of things, you know, yeah. I think it is yeah. indeed very crucial for us to be not biased in that sort of things. When people want to engage, when people wanted to interact, and this is part and parcel of what unity is all about. You will never be able to know what they are liking you if you don't meet them, you don't see them. Yeah. So I think, uh, of course, the uh, question when you asked me in link just now with regard to, you know, blaming people for whatever happened, actually, had they not disturbed us in Sabah, mm. you know, it would have been a different kind of environment then. You know, because Sabah was noted as one of the green areas. Many yeah. green areas, interior, zero, tenum, tambunan, keningau, all those areas, there was no incidence of COVID. Yeah. So, but of course, there was COVID politics coming up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that, that desire... <laughs> Of, uh, say like the current government to take over power uh, not only in Johor, in Melaka, in Kedah and I realized this coming into Sabah as well uh, then I, I thought that this is not healthy because I know of course it was quite uh, an obstacle because knowing that the, you know COVID is just around the corner uh, of course some of the SOP that we have already devised for the state of government is not too many crowds we limit it to 250 people. If you have a function, not more, you know, lesser will be a bit better. And we even provide uh, masks and also sanitizer to all Sabahan. See, but uh, unfortunately, because of that sort of uh, happening where the use of uh, cash is key, this money, trying to buy YBs, and then all of a sudden, they jump from one place to another place. And then uh, mm -hmm. that is not the right practice for us. In a democratic process like what you have in Malaysia, is that let the power be decided, not through that sort of methods that we had recently, but through decision made by the public, by the voters themselves. And that will be a lot easier. Otherwise, if we allow this to happen in Sabah, particular in the country, you know, then, then you have a problem of, uh, you don't have to contest in, uh, in, in parliament. You just have ton and tons of money. And the tycoon will be able to buy Tom, Dick and Harry for 10 million, 10, 20 million. <laughs> so you yeah. don't have to waste time. Is that the practice? That we don't want that to become precedent in the future. That sort of things are happen, happening in, 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 in this part of the world. So I think... Mm. I, uh, I I was of the opinion that, it, that should not be the way. And at the same time, because it is embedded in the constitution. So we, we allowed us for the chief minister, even the prime minister, to advise the king or the governors to dissolve the assembly when it is required because of certain circumstances. So because I, I, I don't want that to happen in, in Sabah, that's why we decided. But along the way, I did indicate because we have set up a war room in Sabah 
everyone must subscribe to it. There must be a limited number of uh, people to have a gathering. But unfortunately, mm. in elections, it's indeed mm. very difficult. But they have done that in other part of the world. For example, like in Korea, in Singapore, the matter. Even in New Zealand too, we have seen that. They have successfully done an election without any kind of a huge number of uh, casualties of uh, positive uh, COVID-19. Uh, so I think uh, the blame is not right. I mean, to me, it is very undemocratic. It's not a process that we should allow. You know, we were better run at the time. I mean, mm. even now, I'm quite sure. I think I'm helping the government of the day. For example, without them knowing in my hometown, I'm in, in touch with all the doctors there and even taught them how to manage it and even provide, for example, some of the infrastructure. They don't have vehicles and ambulance as an ambulance. So I have to hire five MPV in Kunak, in Samporna, mm-hmm. to ensure that they can take patients, uh, those people who need to be tested, or even those patients with positive to bring them to the nearest hospital nearby in, 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 in Sabah. But uh, as I indicated just now, I mean, we should not allow in the future for transitions of government. It's just like what's happening now in, in, in Peninsula. I mean, the rightful government of the day is supposed to, it's supposed to be the yeah, it's, it's not. It's not the current government, actually, when you look at it. Because we were mandated by the people, voted in, to become government of the day. So I think yeah. uh, it is indeed quite clear. So to blame us for what it could not have been done if there was no other people who did that. You know, buying others to, uh, to entice them with not only money, but also position. Right. Uh, Sadiq, yeah. I'm looking at you nodding at Dr. Sri. Do, do you support of her, his decision during you know, the whole? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, as the chief minister of Sabah, I think it's the responsibility of Dr. Sri Shafi'i to defend the dignity of Sabahans. And as you rightfully pointed out, before the buying of Adon's, uh, before the COVID politic, as uh, Datuk Sri Shafi rightfully pointed out, uh, Sabah was a green zone. Uh, but it was because of the uh, power struggle which ensued, uh, the undignified power struggle through the buying of Adon's, uh, which led to the collapse of the state government and then the subsequent elections. Just imagine if they had just left Sabah to Sabahans, and let it be managed. Uh, none of this would have taken place. And not just uh, the clusters in Sabah, but then now the whole of Malaysia is affected because of the thirst for power uh, to mm. take over uh, mm. the Sabah state government for personal political gains. And um, I think that's categorically wrong. I mean, what do you expect yeah. for, 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 for Dr. Sri Shafi to do? Just allow, oh, never mind, just buy over uh, the adons and then uh, take over government and then everything will be fair. I mean, I'm pretty sure even fellow Malaysians uh, will demand for action as, those, uh, as, as, as this kind of politics is just wrong, it is unethical and it should be confronted and challenged so that no one would ever do it again. Um, mm. so hopefully this will send a strong message uh, to subsequent governments to never do it again because there will be huge casualties. Uh, and these casualties transcend political lines. Everyone is affected. Yes. And uh, Dr. Sri, when I, when I, since we're talking about um, the election and uh, the government, Dr. Sri, when I, when I speak to my people within my circle around uh, Sadiq and I, our age, there's a general sense that everyone is feeling hopeless about our country. Many are thinking, many young ones are thinking of migrating to another country for the future of the children and to look for better, obviously, equal opportunities. I, is there still hope for our country? And do you have any last words to, to our anak muda? Surprisingly, actually, when I went to... You know, Last week, if I'm mistaken, I went to the supermarket van and yeah. went to some uh, uh, things there. And then I uh, on one, uh, two young Malaysians. 
Chinese, and then mm -hmm. at the age of uh, 29, 30, hardly less than 30, I think. And I asked them, say, where are you? Where are you from? I said, Malaysia, working in Singapore. I said, oh, okay. I said, what do you do in Singapore? Uh, they're earning a living thing. So here you are. I mean, they are Malaysians, and they're very young and talented too, and uh, serving not their country, but the other countries. Why is that so happening in, in, in our country? I think this is where I think we have to really realize the need for us to not only unwind this, to have a better kind of not only environment, but policy to attract our young people to serve their country. Not only because of salaries, uh, as you have just said, you come to the artists, they say, why the Westerns are earning more? Then ask why the Peninsula is earning more than, uh, than the Sabahan, uh, become a singer and artist and all sorts of things. I think this is, this is the thing that we have to really dive deeper and yeah. uh, need for us mm. to have, not only to ensure the roadmap, how we can set up a platform where these people, where you can attract talent, all Malaysians, and they serve their country. And I can tell you, we will do far much better than any other, uh, other part of the world if we really create an environment where it is very conducive for them to serve their country. So these are some of the, the problems that we have because uh, somehow structural changes need to be done. There must be structural changes in the system of how the country is governed. If you want to see a better future for Malaysian respective of race and religion, uh, serving their own country, I think we have to do some structural changes. It should be based on merits. Sometimes it is indeed very difficult. You know, I mean, just citing an example, for example, like in property development, yeah, housing, for example, like you have a slot for Unitutra, you have a slot for low-cost housing, and only a small amount of bungalow to be sold. And how can these businesses earn money? Because they got stuck, they can't sell. They can only sell about 10 units of those house, the bungalow one, you know, one unit like that to a magnitude of 3 million, 4 million that. Whereas they got stuck with the local housing, they got stuck with the Wifu Trakotane because not many numbers of people can afford that. That's why I think we must be able to provide the solutions to that. For example, like the government should encourage private sector to build for the private commercial kind of properties. Whereas the government, where those Malaysians can't afford, you know, local housing, let the government play the role, you know, for the Bumi Putra, that sort of things where it can be done, but don't pressure those other people which they cannot uh, excel in life because we want these developers to become a very world developer. I mean, they can compete in the international uh, market, not only providing that sort of facilities in Malaysia. So I think at large, I think it's high, it's high time for us to restructure the system in Malaysia to ensure that Malaysians will be able to earn a better living and they have better opportunity. You know, I think there must be some kind of interactions uh, in the system that we have and we, shouldn't, we should not be divided uh, in terms of race and religion and it should be based on merits. That's why when I took over the government of Sabah uh, for a short period of time, immediately assessed those people, not based on race, but uh, one department, for example, like uh, Department of uh, uh, Land and Survey, then there was also Ministry of Finance, who are there? I said, no, no don't, don't equip them because of their race, but they gave me the list, who are these? One Chinese guy was there, a very senior guy, and he's next in line, and he has been quite capable of doing it. Put him there, he become the director. Of course, initially people will question that it is a very crucial department, land and survey. Why do you give it to the Chinese? But never in my mind, I said, they are Sabah, they are Malaysians. Why can't you just allow mm. them? And I'm sure, I think I'm quite very sure that these people will be able to deliver, their, render their services. Uh, they can perform better. And that is more important than just looking to the race. You, you can have your own people there, but they can go homeless. Where the country we should go? So I think it is indeed uh, very crucial for us to create that sort of environment. But uh, structure changes need to be done, policy need to be done to attract talents in the country so that we don't have this brain drain. You know, there's so many talented Malaysians working in US. You know, and even for that matter, for example, how many Malaysians working not only not to mention 
in Singapore, but Australia, New Zealand, Sabahan, by hundreds a day. They're working in Australia, even in Hong Kong too. You know, I think it is indeed timely for us to make sure that we help to review this, uh, to encourage our young talent to serve their own country. Right. Dr. Sri, yes or no question. Are you our hope for our country? <laughs> Am I any hope? Yeah, <laughs> yes or no. It's an obvious <laughs> answer, yes or no. Well, uh, you know, it's for the people to make that assessment whether uh, what I have <laughs> No, you, no uh -huh. you should say yes. Where's the spirit, Dr. Sri? Where's the spirit? Sadiq, I yes hope, or no? I will, I, I will Are you. <laughs> I want to answer Dr. Sri. He is. He has a yes. huge responsibility not just for Sabahans but for all Malaysians and hopefully the wave of unity will not just be exclusive to Sabahans but for all Malaysians. So I'll answer on behalf of Dr. Sri. On behalf of Dr. Sri. It is always a lame. It is always good to have a third party validators to ensure. That. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay. and that's, that's okay. Sadiq for you. <laughs> All right, um, we have uh, one more question, easy question from our audience. Uh, Dr. Sri, very easy. Do you karaoke, Dr. Sri? Well, I do. Uh, during my younger days, you know, I can. Hmm. Well, we were there. I mean, uh, yeah? Okay, <laughs> now, what's your go to song, Bila Karaoke, Dr. Sri? Well, the, I used to sing this when it's a Malay song, is Brori Maran. Eh, that's okay. Oh, could you give us a little demo, a little chorus? <laughs> Well, Come on, Dr. Sri. <laughs> the old one, but the people might be get bored with it. Ah, it's it fine. Is, yeah. Tonight, it, you are the highlight of tonight, Dr. Sri. Come on, just give them what they want. A little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> when, I, when I was in England, since Christmas is coming, so when I started in England, almost when I switch on the TV and the song that appear on TV almost every now and then, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> nice. Well, Christmas is coming. That is good job. Good, I, good job. <laughs> Rory is Angin Malam. Angin Malam. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's I think we have, we have to go we have to go offline and get a karaoke session for the <laughs> but, but but Sadiq I have one question for you sure I think you're, you're nervous now huh? I, I just get like a dang it Elaine is uh, gonna ask me to sing <laughs> are, are you ready for your question sure yes I am okay okay Sadiq <clears throat> serious you you recently tried to learn how to be a good husband on on TikTok. <laughs> Get, getting YB Hannah to assist you in the process. What's up with that? Should should Sadik Sadik should Toby or Meow Meow be concerned that you're a bad husband? <laughs> huh? No, I mean I I mean being young, I need to learn from everyone, uh, mm -hmm. especially for my two colleagues, uh, YB Hannah and YB Yo, uh, both married. YB Yo recently. <laughs> And when I was a part of cabinet, I thought, you know, I'll have YB Yobi in to, to be in the singles club like me, you know, not married yet. Um, unfortunately. You thought wrong. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, halfway through. And then it, I think now it's just me. Then uh, it was just me. Um, but either way, uh, I think the purpose of the video was not on me, <laughs> on potentially getting married, but a lot more about sending the right positive message <laughs> of how uh, we should treat each other with dignity and respect whether you are the husband or the wife in a relationship. So hopefully people don't lose that part of the message. The message is not about me getting married. <laughs> that's me. That's me and I are on the same page. Sadiq, I don't think people got the right message. They got the wrong message. Asking like, is Sadiq getting married? Finally? <laughs> uh, that's me. Do you know what's a TikTok? I hope you know what's a TikTok. You don't know? You know? <laughs> no, really, it's okay. We'll get Sadiq to forward you some of his uh, TikTok videos. They're pretty impressive. They're pretty impressive. <laughs> all right, that's, that's all the time that we have. Again, thank you so much, Datu Sri and Sadiq, for your time. I hope uh, to get together again and on the next episode in the future, perhaps. Uh, have that's a lovely nice. evening, and thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ellen. <laughs> thank you, Datu Sri. Thank you very much to City Center and Elaine and to all the viewers. May God bless yeah. us. And hopefully the budget will go uh, as what the people wanted it to be. 
for example, like it can get up or we have yet to listen to <laughs> what is the answer coming to yeah. right. Kepada penonton-penonton, terima kasih kerana sudi bersama dengan kami malam ini. Jangan lupa saksikan episod yang seterusnya setiap hari Rabu jam 9 malam here on the Unity Channel. We have a surprise guest for you next week, so make sure you tune in. I'm Elaine Audrey reminding you to stay safe. I'll catch you next week. Selamat malam. Thank you.